Hi, my name is Chris Brennan with theastrologyschool.com, and in this video I'm going to talk about some of the different definitions of the concept of void of course in astrology. Alright, so let's jump right into it. So, uh, Although most people don't realize this, there's actually at least three different ways that the concept of the void of course moon or the concept of void of course in general has been defined in the astrological tradition over the past 2,000 years. So the original definition, the oldest definition of void of course that I've been able to find from the Hellenistic astrological tradition, um, which was defined all the way back around the first century CE in a text by an author named Antiochus of Athens, is according to Antiochus, the moon is said to be void of course when it will not complete any major aspect, any Ptolemaic aspect, with any other planets in the chart within the next 30 degrees. So that means uh, for that condition to take place, the moon would not make an exact aspect with uh, in the first century, it would be any of the seven traditional planets, or the six other planets, including the sun, um, with an exact aspect, which would include the sextile, uh, square, trine, opposition, or conjunction. So we're talking about major aspects here using the Hellenistic approach from 2,000 years ago. So that was the original definition of void of course, and in that definition, it's really focused on the notion that whatever uh, aspects or whatever planets the moon is applying to, that that indicates something about the future, whereas separating aspects were said to indicate something about the past. So if the moon is not applying to anything within the next 30 degrees, uh, evidently this is regardless of sign boundaries, then it means that for an entire um, almost 48 hour period, so about for a two day period, the moon will not complete any aspects. And so this is tied into the very name that was originally given to the concept, which in Greek was kenodromia, which means running in the emptiness or running in the void. And this is what the term void of course originally derives from, and that's essentially what it means, is a planet that's literally moving through the sky um, and moving into emptiness because it's not meeting with or encountering any other planets or their aspects during that time frame. So uh, this definition of void of course evidently was used for approximately the first uh, 700 or maybe even 1000 years of the practice of Western astrology. And we have references to this definition in Antiochus from the first century, from uh, Porphyry of Tyre in the fourth century, and from Rhetorius of Egypt, who may have lived around the 6th or 7th century CE. So this is essentially the original definition that most of the Greek astrologers used, the astrologers who wrote in Greek uh, in the Hellenistic tradition. So later on during the medieval and modern astrological traditions, there was a move uh, to create a slightly more dynamic astrology that had some additional um, concepts built into the aspect doctrine. And I think this happened because of the further development of the concept of horary astrology. And in the Hellenistic tradition, while horary um, sort of has its origins there, it didn't really become a full-fledged fourth branch of the astrological tradition, it seems, until the medieval period, especially around the 8th and 9th centuries. And in, in horary astrology, it's very important to see if the significators, the relevant significators in a chart, will complete an aspect or not, especially before they've left the signs that they're currently in. So I think it's out of this idea or this concept that we get the second definition of void of course, which is actually the definition that's the most common uh, now in modern times, in the 20th and, and early 21st century. So in this definition of void of course, the moon is said to be void of course, uh, or you could say moving in the emptiness, to use the ancient Greek phrase, uh, if the moon will not complete any exact aspects with any other planets in the chart before it leaves the sign that it's currently in, so the sign of the zodiac that it's currently in. So this takes place um, especially when the moon is towards the end of a sign. Eventually what will happen is 
the moon will complete whatever its last exact aspect is with another planet, and then it won't complete another aspect until it moves into the following zodiacal sign. So uh, this is the, the common definition of void, of course, that's become very popular and al almost had some mainstream recognition over the past few decades. And in most astrological calendars or um, you know daily guides or things like that, when they say the moon is void, of course, this is typically what they mean. So that's the second definition that was probably developed in the medieval period and especially has been used in modern times. Uh, the third definition is a more recent one where there were some astrologers who were studying uh, 17th century astrologer, uh, astrology, especially around the late 80s and early 90s, and they went back and they reread the text of William Lilly, who wrote one of the first English language textbooks on astrology in the mid 17th century and Lilly's work was titled Christian Astrology. So one uh, astrologer, one scholar who went back and read Lilly's work uh, named Sue Ward, she published a paper in 1995 where she argued that, um, that people had misunderstood how Lilly was actually using the concept of void of course, and in her interpretations she said that Lilly actually seemed to be using the concept of void of course to, and defining it in a different way. And this brings us to our third potential definition of void of course, or the third major way that it's interpreted and used as a concept by a number of astrologers. So in Sue Ward's interpretation, she said that the moon, or in her interpretation of Lily, she argued that Lily defined void of course as meaning that the moon is not essentially within orb of applying to any other planets in the chart, uh, regardless of sign boundaries. So this creates an interesting almost middle ground between the previous two definitions, and if anything it's a lot more like the first definition from the Hellenistic tradition where they said that the moon was void of course if it does not complete an exact aspect within the next 30 degrees. Um, in this instance, uh, Sue Ward was arguing that Lily defined void of course as not as basically occurring if the moon was not in orb of any other planets at all. So uh, that creates, and, and there's been some debates about that where there's some astrologers who focus on the medieval and renaissance traditions who have endorsed that, that reinterpretation or that interpretation of William Lilly and said that that was the correct definition of void of course that he used. There's other practitioners that I've met who specialize in Lilly's text as well who disagree in that interpretation and instead use something more like the modern version of, of void of course that I defined as the second definition. So that one's a little bit tricky because uh, you know it's it's a matter of historical debate at this point what whether that was a correct interpretation of Lilly and the definition that he used or not, as well as whether that definition was used by other astrologers prior to Lilly. So I don't want to get into the details and sort of nuances in the back and forth surrounding those debates, but instead for the purpose of this video I just wanted to define what those three different definitions of void of course, course are in order to start the conversation, uh, in order to let you know what they are, and sort of raise awareness so that this discussion can take place between astrologers today. Because the first step is for everybody to be aware of the different definitions, and then from that point forward we can kind of talk about it and hash out which ones make the most sense, which ones work best in practice, and so on and so forth. So uh, the final thing that I want to say is it may not be a matter of you know establishing the one correct definition of void of course, but all three of these could have different uh, gradations of truthfulness or relevance in astrological interpretation because each of them are like more um, extreme scenarios of the moon not applying to any other planets within a certain range. So to some extent it's not necessarily a matter of one of them being correct and the other two being wrong, but instead we may want to look at it from the perspective of each of, this, each of these is telling us something different about this sort of type of scenario that the moon runs into from time to time when it does not encounter any other planets as it's moving on its course through the sky. All right, so I think that brings me to the end of this video. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please post them in the comments section below. 
If you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.